For the first time since allegations of sexual harassment rocked the presidential campaign of Herman Cain, one of his accusers stood in front of television cameras. He suddenly reached over and he put his hand on my leg, <coughs> under my skirt, and reached for my genitals. He also grabbed my head and brought it towards his crotch. Sharon Bialik is the first woman to publicly claim Cain assaulted her. Three others have done so anonymously. The GOP candidate's campaign quickly issued a statement saying all allegations of harassment against Mr. Cain are completely false. The Cain campaign to this point has been able to portray themselves as victims of anonymous smear tactics. Now there's someone who's physically going to be in front of a camera saying, no, this happened to me. AP's Phil Elliott covers the Republican presidential candidates. He says the Cain campaign seemed unaware of the fallout the claims of sexual harassment would bring. They were not ready for this. They thought they'd be able to say no comment and that would be the end of it. The people around him have not been serving him well in this situation by saying if you just stay on message, this storm will go away. It's not going away. I'm coming forward to give a face and a voice to those women who cannot or for whatever reasons do not wish to come forward. The bigger question is how the cloud of harassment will impact the Republican race. For more than a week, it sucked all the air out of the room for the other candidates. It's a tension they can't afford to sacrifice, given the fact that the first voting is less than two months away. And can Kane's campaign survive? Some politicians have weathered sex scandals, Others haven't. It's a mixed bag and it comes down to the, how solid the politician is, not so much whether the accusations are true or not. It may come down to voters who decide that the allegations are a sideshow, less important than Kane's political message. Matt Friedman, The Associated Press.